Hello, my friends. Hope you're doing well. We're back with another Brotato class guide, this time for the mage. So I actually hadn't beaten the mage before I sat down to make this guide, and I was a little surprised when I saw that this was one that was giving people trouble uh, until I actually tried it, and the mage gave me the most trouble of any character to come up with a consistent strategy and actually the most tries to make this guide of any character so far, including the one-armed or the really complicated characters that we've already done guides for. The mage is deceptively difficult for a couple reasons. So how it works is you get bonus elemental damage. You start with a snake, which spreads your any burning effect you apply to an additional enemy, and a scared sausage, which gives you a 25% chance to apply burning with every attack. You can't get melee ranged or engineering damage upgrades, but you can get normal percentage damage upgrades. The reason the mage is so hard, I think, is that basically burning doesn't stack. So let's say you pick a wand. If you have this wand and then a second wand attacking, it they each hit for one damage, 50% of your elemental damage, and then apply your elemental damage, apply the burning effect. But the second one won't apply the burning effect. So you basically lose out on the entire damage of the second one that you have. Additionally, the scared sausage, if you were to apply that 25%, chance of an additional burning effect wouldn't do anything. So if you have a weapon that applies burning already, you're basically giving up a whole item slot from your starting items. For that reason, and because I think that the wand is overall a fairly weak item, the weapon that I found works best on this character is actually the taser. It has 80% damage scaling with your elemental damage. It can apply the burning damage, and it also comes with the support weapon synergy tag, which if you stack this up a bunch, you get a lot of harvesting. Since the mage kind of struggles to clear waves, having harvesting lets us keep up on levels. So that's what we're going to go with, and I will show you how to win with the mage. So one thing to keep in mind is if you apply the burning effect to an enemy, it's going to take three damage in the first wave, so you would need to apply it twice to actually kill something. So if you try not to hit the same enemy twice with the taser, you can sometimes get a, an additional kill in the early waves. Uh, let's pick the elemental damage. We're going to be taking elemental damage every time we see it. And because we have a support weapon type, we're going to hard roll for tasers. I've talked about this before, but you're guaranteed two weapons in previous guides. You're guaranteed two weapons in in every one of your rolls in your first two shops. So any other items that you want, you can lock and then you can hard roll and you're very likely to find the same item over again because you are more likely to find items with tags that you already have. We actually also found two items that we really want. I'm gonna buy the taser and we're gonna roll and roll again, trying to lock another taser. We missed, but we at least get to keep looking for them. More Scared Sausages is great. This will increase our percent chance to apply burning to 50%. And of course, more elemental damage is really good as well. And going from 25 to 50% increases our effective damage by much more than that 25%. Because we're going to be trying to kill enemies mostly by spreading the burning effect across the map. The earlier you do that, it gets spread to more enemies. It gets to tick for much longer, so we actually get quite a bit of extra damage out of that. Here I am going to actually re-roll, because we're just looking for percent damage and elemental damage. We didn't find anything here, so I'm going to just take some percent dodge. 6% dodge is too good to pass up, I think. We're going to grab this taser again and keep on rolling, leaving these locked. All right, so we get to lock in this. I could actually roll again because we could still roll another level one taser. I think with only a single slot, it's probably not worth doing. So this is, I would usually like to have five with a sixth locked, but since we got a little lucky and rolled the level two taser, we're okay with four with a fifth one locked. Make sure to clear the trees. Oh no, 
a loot alien spawned right at the end, so we couldn't get him. Okay. Uh, here I'm again going to reroll these stats, looking for elemental damage or damage. Uh, I would also take harvesting, because if you get your harvesting to 40 early on, then it starts ticking up by two every wave instead of one every wave, but for now just elemental damage. And here I will take this eight harvesting. Great. All right, so this is maybe the perfect shop for us. We want all of these items. I'll start with the weapon. And then I'm going to prioritize getting two items out of this shop. So 59 minus 28, that gives us enough to still buy this one. Uh, I actually will spend one reroll because we're still guaranteed one weapon in our in this wave, and so we can maybe find a weapon here. So we're, we're guaranteed to find a weapon. We didn't get lucky on the taser, but I will still lock in the scared sausage. I'm also going to lock in this gecko. Um, it's really good for picking up stuff, and also range is a stat that is kind of deceptively important on this character. Our base weapon only has 200 range, which is less range than some melee weapons, like the spear. And so increasing range is important, and also there's several items that we really want on the mage that decrease our range, so we really need to make sure that we're not going too low and losing out on a ton of range. Nice, got a crate. So notice how many of these enemies are getting the burning effect, and then they just die over time. I will take this. HP regeneration is probably how we're going to do our healing, and even though we lose 1 HP from consumables, which is a real downside, I think it's worth taking the alien worm here, and I'll take 6 max HP here as well. For here... Oh, this is an interesting choice. 10 harvesting or 15 luck. Both of those are really good. Obviously, we also want damage and elemental damage, but I think what I'm going to do here is actually grab this 10 harvesting. That gets us over 40, so now we're getting two every wave from the 5% increase. And then here we are just buying this whole set of items and rolling again. Nice, and we got our sixth taser, so that gets us an additional, we're up to 25 harvesting and five elemental damage. And then nothing here we want. I'll do one more roll. We'll lock this and we'll lock this. And I will also lock this as well because starting waves with minus 50% HP is definitely a downside, but we need to stack regeneration because we'll want a way to heal. So now I think we're pretty well set up, and the things that I really need most of all are just enough damage and defensive stats to win elite waves. Elite waves, I think, are the biggest struggle for this character because your damage comes over time and gets kind of reapplied every tick rather than stacking. So you do less damage to a single entity than many other classes that can attack them over and over again. I'm trying to get that guy, nice. Had to tank a little damage for it, but definitely worth it to get that crate. I'll take this, even though it reduces our harvesting. Like I said, we want healing, and we'll take this percentage damage as well. A uh, percent damage is better on this character than it is on other characters, because we have a multiplier on our flat damage. So percent damage is going to be multiplying a higher base damage stat. Let's continue to upgrade all our things. Looks like we can get everything here. And even though we don't want to lose percent damage, I will still take some attack speed. Attack speed is really good, uh, again, because we're multiplying the elemental damage. And the taser has a pretty bad base attack speed, so you gain a lot of value out of having even a small amount of bonus attack speed on this weapon. One thing that we are going to be keeping an eye out for is we might take a high level wand if one shows up or a flamethrower because those burning effects are better than the ones we apply from the scared sausage. So even though we can't apply both, we could overwrite the, the random burning effect with a higher powered burning effect. So it can often be worth it to help you clear through large waves to have some of those items. I don't think we're going to be able to get that guy. He spawned too late at the end of the wave. All right, we're definitely not taking that cog. Uh, we will take minus lifesteal. We're going to use regeneration for our healing. And like I said, range is important for us. And attack speed is, of course, really good. And here I'll take some max HP and some elemental damage. 
Right. I kind of want this whole shop. We don't currently pierce at all, but we will want to buy piercing later. I think I'm going to pass on the pumpkin for now just because I'd like to roll for more critical items earlier. And then in order to... Then we can buy that if it shows up after we get some way of piercing. A third snake, also really good. Now we're actually spreading the burning damage across large piles of enemies. And here, like we talked about, I am going to combine this and buy one wand. And so this wand deals 26 times 4 compared to our scared sausages effect of 18 times 3. So having a single item that applies burning damage uh, itself is pretty valuable for this class. So that, that should increase our wave clear and our effective damage significantly. Oh, I didn't manage to clear that egg before it hatched, but that's okay. We can just get burning on that guy and then... Oh, I also missed on that one. Get burning and then run away from them. And that helps us clear out the big guys pretty quickly. Definitely would like some piercing effect, because right now we are still having a little bit of trouble with crowds, even though we're spreading fire all over the place. But it takes a while for the fire to take down all these enemies. Okay. All of these are pretty good, but I'd like to get our HP regeneration up to two a second, so I'm just going to take this. And then, nice, we got a level 3 taser. That's great. So let's do combine and purchase. And the level 3 one fires three times, so it has three times as much chance to apply the burning effect as well. So that's something to keep in mind with the tasers, is as you level them, they gain additional projectiles, which means more chance to apply the scared sausage burning. Uh, also, another thing to keep an eye out for on the mage is turrets and landmines and especially the pocket factory, because constructs can apply the burning damage. And so every time this turret fires, there's a 75% chance that it burns four enemies. So it's a huge amount of damage that you get on that. And it's on the other side of the map from you. So it's killing stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to kill um, without having to do any work for it and without having to build any engineering. So tons of synergy with what we're already building here. Here, I'm definitely going to lock this in, even though we're building HP regeneration. This is just a huge amount of extra damage, and I'll take this fertilizer as well. That'll pay for itself pretty quickly. I'll do one more roll, even with only three slots, just to see if there's anything cool that we get. And I will take percent XP gain. That ends up... It, if we get that fairly early, it ends up being a pretty big boost, and we lose some range here. Also, just keeping in mind that we need to be prepared either with a ton of regen or a ton of damage or both for wave 11. So within three waves, I want to have the ability to survive an elite. Trying to stay on the other side of the map from my turret so that the turret can burn stuff that I'm not currently burning. Turret actually fired three times there without getting a 75% chance proc. That's pretty funny. <laughs> So yeah, I would say the biggest things we're missing are, of course, just more damage, always more damage, always um, higher maximum HP and armor and dodge, and some kind of piercing projectile effect. Here I'm going to just take max HP. We can now upgrade our wand. I don't want two wands, so I'm actually going to sell the existing wand because we only just want this to apply the burning effect. And I'm going to actually take all of these items. So let's start with this, and then we'll lock in these two. Because if we have two wands and they both shoot the same thing, it's, it's completely wasted damage. Whereas we could have the taser, which if it shoots something actually deals significant base damage, so our overall damage is going to be higher with only a single wand and five tasers. 
that would be similar if we were using the flamethrower, and if we get a really high level flamethrower, we might sell the wand for that. To use that to apply the burning damage instead. Oh, walked into an enemy there. Would love to get a little bit of armor as well. Currently taking a lot of damage from every hit. So even though our regeneration and max HP isn't bad and our regeneration is pretty good, our effective HP is lower than it could be if I had a bunch more armor. All right, here I am still just gonna take max HP and here we will take percent damage. Here I'm going to, ooh, this is a tough one. 9% dodge would increase our effective HP a lot, but it's really hard to pass up three elemental damage on this character. So I'm gonna take that. And then we are gonna take all of these. Currently have no luck on this character, which is kind of interesting. I usually end up with a lot more luck on in my builds. Minus eight range. This is why we've been building range because it lets us buy percent damage, which we really want. I will again take some minus HP regeneration in exchange for max HP. And I'm going to lock this in and we'll buy the missile as well. This percent damage now means that our burning damage effect from our wand is dealing 42 times 5, whereas, and from the scared sausage, 30 times 3. So that's a huge amount of extra damage overall. I read... Uh, I'm also going to keep an eye out, because in my testing it has looked like the landmine has applied the burning damage, but the... Wiki said that it can't, so I'm curious if that is actually the case. No, it just did there. Okay, so the wiki's wrong about that. The landmine can apply the burning damage. Oh, got a, a loot guy. Got him. Stay there to kill that tree. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind getting a little bit of luck at this point just to get some extra higher some higher level items in the shops, mostly. Our harvesting is actually getting really good. We've got 65 here. Um, well, I'll still take the minus luck because max HP and regeneration is really important. And like I talked about, I really want armor. So while I would love to buy this entire sh uh, level up shop, this... Three going from zero to three armor is 17% less damage overall, which is a huge decrease, right? Basically, that's so. If I'd bought nine HP, uh, that would have been 20% of yeah, that's less than the 17%. Uh, we'll buy this armor as well. I do want to repair my speed a little bit, but for now, we are going to go with this. And I will grab this Lucky Charm. I'm not going to re-roll again because we couldn't buy anything anyways. But now we've gotten our luck back positive. And here's the Elite. This is definitely one of the difficult Elites for us to face. Because the charge is pretty high damaging. Oh, okay. I need to kind of hold off and just heal up for a minute before re-engaging. Oh, I shouldn't have tanked that shot. Oh no, <laughs> okay. I need to need to focus up here. We're taking way more damage than I should. Let me let me just back away from the elite for a second. Notice that it is continuing to tick down though. Alright, gonna focus it and finish it off. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so that that was a slightly worse elite fight than it should have been, but. It was okay. <laughs> and because we've been building nothing but damage, we were able to clear it out relatively quickly and get our legendary. All right, here I'm definitely not taking minus elemental damage. Ooh, a potato. Well, this item is great, obviously, for everybody. It's just all the stats increased, so we'll take that. And then plus 12% damage is perfect. Now our elemental damage is increased by a significant amount. Here I am going to continue to pass on more wands, but we will buy this Poisonous Tonic again. I'm not going to take this even though 
range is good, but I really want to get our armor up to about like 10 or 15 before the next elite wave, which is wave 18. I'm going to take the metal plate for that reason, and we will take this as well. And then over here, I'm going to grab the turret. I'm going to lock the handcuffs for one round. Um, no, I, I would take this if our max HP was closer to 100, but at only 69, nice HP, 8 elemental damage is, I think, not worth locking our max HP. We need to be able to tank through enemies in the later game, especially the two bosses in the boss wave. If our HP was closer to 80, I would probably have locked that for one round and then rolled in the level up screen if we got that for any max HP items. As is, though, I think it's it's safer not to put ourselves in the position of just not having the HP to tank through an elite or a boss. Again, notice all the fire is being applied by the turrets across the map, and that is really helping us clear these waves quickly. Uh, here I am going to probably... Just re-roll this. I could take speed, but our speed's at zero already, so I don't really need to buy more speed right now, and I think we can do better than the 3% dodge. Let's get... Yeah, we'll grab 12% damage. Crit is a little worse on this character than it is on other characters, just because your burning damage can't hit, uh, critically hit, but it's still pretty good, because a lot of our damage just does come from just shooting things with the tasers. Alien magic is great for us. Now our HP regeneration is almost at every half second. Let's reroll again. I will take an upgraded taser, of course. And I'll take the ugly tooth as well. We do lose three speed, but we are also applying damage across the map with these turrets. I don't know if a burning damage tick actually counts for the speed removal for this. So I'll try to see if we can, you know, suss out if that's working or not. This is another really good chop for us. I will start with the metal detector and then lock these two. We do lose a little bit of damage, but a metal detector is good for just improving your economy, which we need. And our damage is pretty good right now. <laughs> The item I think I want most right now is actually, and you'll hear me say this a lot, you're probably sick of it if you've watched my other guides, but it's actually Pocket Factory, because that would let us set up a ton of turrets, all of which could apply the burning effect all across the map, and that would give us way more potential clears over the course of a wave. walked into that laser. Something to keep in mind, too, is that it's not worth going out of my way for health pickups, because we have two negative healing from health pickups on in this build, so they're only worth one HP. Oh, uh, I, I didn't see that loot alien until the end there. Yeah, we'll grab a metal detector again, and then here I'm going to take some dodge, try to get our dodge up to a reasonable level, and then... I think I want all of these items again, so let's start with trees, because that's economy, and then we'll take this and this. Now I do need to buy some speed, because we're going to get a, a minus 5% speed. We'll be coming in soon. Also, even though we don't build any engineering, the actual base damage of our turrets and mines isn't terrible, just because we've built a decent amount of percent damage buff. Like, that mine just did 47 damage there. So, and then of course on top of that, they currently have a 75% chance to burn four different enemies, which 
is huge for wave clear. So I think there's kind of two key insights for beating the mage here. One is that wand is uh, a bad item if you are stacking it, but a good item if you only have one of it. Um, and the second is that you just struggle for damage, so all you really need to do to succeed on this character is just make sure you're buying a ton of damage. Great, we got Pierce. Pierce is perfect for this class, and we'll take elemental damage, of course. Another pretty good shop for us. I really don't like Alien Baby, though. 8% enemy speed makes it really hard to dodge. So, uh, and not only is it like harder to dodge just in general, but it also throws off all your timings and your muscle memory because the enemies are moving a different amount. So I try to avoid this item wherever I can. I am going to be looking for something that gives us some speed, though. We will take the Gentle Alien, obviously. Damage and HP are good, and more enemies means more money. And then here, I'm going to actually take this Lemonade to repair our healing from consumables. That will end up being quite a lot of uh, healing over the course of a wave. And I am going to lock this Warrior Helmet, but if I don't find a way to make ourselves faster before the next shop, then I won't buy it. Because at minus 10% speed, it becomes actually quite difficult to dodge many attacks, especially on certain elites and on the boss wave. Clear out that egg before it hatches. So while obviously the armor is really good, we do want to avoid having our speed go too far into the negatives. Also notice that now that I have piercing, and piercing means it hits more enemies and applies more burning damage, of course, on every attack, both on our attacks and on our turret attacks, we are killing these enemies really, really fast. We're just clearing this whole wave very, very quickly. Make sure to pick up materials before the end of the wave. Uh, definitely not taking that. And then here... I will take probably just percent damage, and then I'm going to take this armor, and then we are going to pass on the warrior helmet. A little sadly, but uh, going down to minus 13% speed I think is too big a downside. On the other hand, community support is great, extra attack speed is really good, and we do lose 2 armor, but that still leaves us with 10, so that's 40% damage reduction. Uh, the Vigilante Ring, I think, will still have time to pay for itself uh, with the damage at the end of a wave. We've got four more waves, so that's basically buying 12% damage for the boss wave. So it's not like a huge increase, but it's still worth taking, I think. And then I'm going to grab the Metal. Metal is great, and we'll take percent damage here. Metal's even better on this character than on other characters because we don't really use critical hit. We've repaired our consumable healing up to two, so each of those fruits is worth two hit points. Not a huge amount, but it can definitely save you in some tight situations, or help you heal up in order to re-engage with a boss or an elite. Hoping that the elite we get in wave 18 isn't a particularly tough one. There are some elites that are really difficult for this character. So I can't tell if the enemies are moving slower after each burning tick or not from our ugly tooth. I think probably not, but if it does work that way, that's really strong. So this damage cannot apply the burning effect, at least as far as I have noticed. Um... But it's still probably good to take, as opposed to getting 26 materials. And then obviously we don't want that. Here I am going to grab max HP. Now we're over 100 and feeling good about that one. I'm gonna grab armor. And we'll take lure. So this gives us regeneration. We are now at more than two health a second. Attack speed for damage is not worth it for us. Here I probably won't take the metal detector at this point. I don't think it's ever going to pay for itself. Um, fertilizer 
also probably won't pay for itself before the end of the game, so I'm just going to reroll that. Flaming Brass Knuckles and the other melee weapons that apply burning effects are kind of interesting, and I, I haven't tried that. I think it's probably better to just use a wand or a flamethrower, but something to keep in mind as a possibility. I will take the snail. Minus 5% ener enemy speed for minus 3% hour speed is a good deal, although again, we need to get our speed back up. Eye surgery is one of the weapons I was one of the items I was talking about that reduces your range, but obviously is critically important for this character. Burning activates 10% faster is a wildly significant damage increase because you'll constantly re-refresh the duration of burning. So even though it doesn't increase the total damage of each application, as the burning continues to be applied to the enemy over and over again, it's going to tick that much more and just do way more damage. Just running around here um, against these laser tentacle guys. Just stand still. They fire to either side of you, so you can always dodge their attack just by standing still. That's the first hit I took this wave so far, but I think we'll be okay. <laughs> All right. We know we have an elite next wave. I will grab this armor, of course, and I'll take this for extra damage. And then, yeah, I'll just keep taking more armor here. More damage would also be good, but getting our damage reduction up to 55% damage reduction, that's really nice. I'm not going to take the blood donation. Um, I don't think it will pay for itself by the end of the... Well, it, it will technically pay for itself by the end of the game, but it's just not worth 150 materials when we could have better items up front. Hey, we got 100% damage ab uh, application. Let me continue to look for, we're looking for move speed and of course just damage and armor and stuff like that. Uh, and speaking of damage and armor, we got two of those things. And then here I will lock both of these items because more dodge is also really good for us. All right, this I think is one of the harder elites to fight as this character because it's going to make it really it's going to start charging at us in its second form while still putting out this ring of projectiles that we have to dodge and because it's wave 18 it has a lot of health oh i guess it's its third form where it starts charging so currently still fairly easy to dodge this form trying to constantly reapply damage to it and stay away from the enemies. All our turrets and landmines and stuff clearing all the little enemies. Oh, okay, never mind. I guess I was confused about which elite this was. That one was actually really easy because it doesn't charge at us. The ones that charge at you are more dangerous. But the ones that just shoot projectiles, you can just maintain your spacing. Um, and because our turrets and, and landmines and stuff are clearing all the enemies across the map from us, we never really had to worry about other stuff and dodging that. We'll take attack speed for sure. Explosive turret, the explosions can apply the burning damage, so this is this one's really, really strong. And then here I'm going to... I'll just take HP regeneration. Another shop where we want most of the items in it. You'd much rather see a shop where you want every item in it than one where you want three, because then you still have to reroll. And... To regeneration and get our lifesteal back to 1% in exchange for a little bit of harvesting loss. I think that's still worth it. At 33 health regeneration, we regenerate 3 health a second. Which makes it much easier for us to actually survive the boss wave. A little sad we never saw Pocket Factory this run because it's really fun watching the burning damage just get spread all around all the enemies.
as always, of course, let me know what class you'd like to see next. I've been really enjoying making these guides, and they've been doing pretty well. People have been have been enjoying them and watching them, so always open to feedback on what we want to see next. Uh, this is another item that is good for us, although we do lose speed. I'm now going to be rolling pretty hard for speed on our next level up. It's it's generally hard to find harder to find speed in items than it is on level ups because there's just fewer items. Um, oh wait, hang on, we're going into the last level actually. So never mind. I guess we're just playing the last level with minus ten percent speed unless we find something particularly lucky. Can't afford this second explosive turret. Tragic, but we will take plus 10 range here. And then nothing else that we want. I'll roll once again just for fun. And let's go. So just making sure to apply the burning damage to both bosses. Ooh, tanking a, a bunch of unnecessary hits there. Let me disengage a little bit and then we will try to heal up. Then I'm going to head back in, stay near this boss. I'd like to split up the bosses if we can. Um, but currently they are both sitting together. It's easier to dodge this guy's circle of bolts the closer you are to him. So you usually want to sit on top of the octopus head boss and try to DPS it down. Both because it has the more dangerous attack patterns, and also because the closer you are to it, the easier it is to dodge this circular beam because of how circles work. The closer it is to the center point of the circle, the slower it's moving. And there we go, that's the mage. So as always, my friends, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. And again, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a comment, let people know that you liked it, share it around all your brotatoing friends, and subscribe to the channel for more of this and other strategy game content. I will catch you next time. Cheers, folks. GG.